Reese Smith, so great to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me. See, see, I uh, packed this, it was a complete accident. You know, I didn't need, mean to keep this in my bag or whatever, but, you know, for the audience. What, what is this? How did, how did me and you get this, but mainly you get this? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a DMR from uh, the Indoor Championships uh, a week ago. Uh, we were second off national champs. Uh, you had a great carry along with Jake and Federico. Put me in a spot to move the team up, and we did. Came up a little short, but second place isn't too bad. Yeah, yeah. I was super nervous before I got the stick. It's a super fantastic facility. Um, I was nervous. I did what I could. Uh, I wasn't super happy with my performance, but when I when I knew you got the stick, you got in a decent enough position that I was. I was confident. I was confident for sure. But, but for the audience, what do you remember? What your split was for that sixteen hundred? Uh, I think three fifty eight. <laughs> oh, okay. <some> change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your first ever sub four conversion. About. Yeah. Do yep. you do you plan on kind of getting another attempt at like a full mile like this season or even next season? Uh, coach and I talked about potentially going for a full mile at Drake relays. Yeah. Uh, depending on what heats look like and stuff like that. Granted, my training won't be great for a four mile, uh, for a sub four attempt in the full mile outdoors. But next year, hopefully at like Boston, or we can put one together at home. We'll definitely try to get our four. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh, like college track is kind of difficult to get a full full mile in outdoor at least because it's all fifteen hundred meters, which is tough. Um, kind of stinks for people in your situation, but I'm sure we can get one in. But other events, do you still plan to steeple again this year? I know you were a national champ last year. Do you still plan on doing that again this year? Yes. I actually am opening up this weekend in Pueblo, Colorado. And then we'll probably take a hiatus for a little bit and then go back out to California and hopefully run a fast one. Yeah, Pueblo. That's elevation. Do you know what that is? Is that going to affect you at all? Um, I don't know. I've never run there or raced at altitude. It's like 4,600 feet, so it's not terrible. Okay. But... I've run it like Denver, but I've never raced, so I don't know how it'll be. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be different for sure. Um, I'm just running 800s, and it'll be in uh, Emporia, Kansas, so it's like it's gonna be sea level, so I won't have to deal with that. But that's exciting. We can get out there. I know it's that's isn't that the national mark? Like yeah, that's the national site. That's why we're trying to get out there, see what it's like. Hopefully, before kind of get one under our belt before we're in the national prelim trying to figure out how altitude's going to affect us. So. Yeah. Best case scenario, you qualify there. Are you going to try and qualify for 5K, 1500? Like, what's your next move from there? Um, so this one's just a rust buster. I have no idea. It could go really well or really bad. Um, from there, we'll probably try to run a really fast steeple at Mount Sac, yeah. uh, get in, like, a pro race with some big-time guys. And then that'll hopefully be my shot to break the D2 national record in the steeple um and then we'll try to double back and do a 5k qualifier and then i'll probably run at drake and then hopefully i'll do steeple and 5k at conference and then hopefully be in in both for nationals yeah you, you said the magic pro word um i've had i know one of one person that's was with accelerate but graduated now asked me like would reese want to go pro um, is that something on your mind? Are you debating it at all? Like, what's the deal with that? Um, it's really tricky. I mean, it's not as simple as just like someone reaching out to you yeah. with a contract. So it's kind of a lot of work on my end. Um, it's not completely off the table, but I mean, I have another year of eligibility next year and I still have to finish my degree yet. Yeah. So it would have to be a really good opportunity, but I wouldn't say it's completely off. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll leave that for him. But we won't get too in-depth into conversation before we start the actual short shorts part of this. That's why this episode is kind of popular because nobody has an hour to give up their time. So we'll keep it to under 15, 20 minutes. But the timer starts. So, Reese, what inspired you to start running competitively? Uh, certainly my older brother. Uh, my freshman year, we had a really good team uh, in cross country. We ended up winning state, so that was kind of my first like entry into like truly competitive running. So that was sort of what got me hooked. Yeah. What's your pre-race ritual or routine? 
Ooh, I like to listen to music on my warm up and a little bit before. I don't do anything too crazy. I usually eat like the same types of foods uh, just to keep it consistent, but I don't really do anything too crazy. Waffle House is uh, cinnamon roll pancakes. Um, what's your favorite race distance? Uh, definitely the three K steeple. Uh, I think it's my best event, which I think it's kind of a cop out because that's just yeah, the yeah. that's just whatever you're best at. That's what you like the most. <laughs> How do you deal with pre race nerves? Um, well, lately, uh, I mean, I think I've been getting nervous more than I I think like in my head. So I've been I've been throwing up before races, <laughs> which is kind of weird. But I mean, I just don't let it affect me too much. Uh, but I don't I don't think I get in my head about nerves. I think that's more just like my body responding. Yeah. Uh, like personally, I don't get too nervous because I just think like I'm gonna get everything I've got, and there's nothing to be nervous about. Because if you don't have it, you don't have it. So that's kind of like the way I look at don't it. Don't let him fool you. He gets nervous. Uh, you said music. Um, what's your pre-race song? Uh, it changes all the time. I don't really use playlists, so I'm just searching it up <laughs> like right before. So whatever it changes day to day. Okay. So, um, what's your proudest moment as a runner? This is probably an easy one. Um, I think yeah, I think it's pretty easy to assume winning a national title. I also think one thing that I thought was, I was super proud of last uh, year was I was the, like the academic athlete of the meet, um, which I think is something that I was honored to get that award just for the sheer fact that it's not easy to do both at a high level. So I thought that was one of my higher, um, one of the things I'm most proud of as well. Yeah, without jokes, Reese is indeed a nerd. He spends most of his time in the library. <laughs> Um, what's the most important lesson you've learned from running, whether it's from a coach or yourself? Um, I think the, the highest highs bring the lowest lows and, uh, you know, when the, the lows make the highs even better, mm -hmm. I think the sport of running is a lot of up and down and, you know, like three months after I won a national title, I had a broken hip. <laughs> so, you know, you kind of get humbled real quick and you just kind of got to ride that wave. But, you know, when you're in your lowest low, you know, the highs on the horizon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, what's your favorite workout or training session? Uh, we do, it's a steeple workout. It's six mm. by 1,000 um, with three of the Ks are over hurdles and three of them are just normal Ks. But the rest is pretty short and it, it's pretty tough to finish. <laughs> Sounds brutal. What's your least favorite? Ooh, least favorite? Um... I don't know. I don't like really doing repeat miles. They seem to just drag on for a long time. Yeah. That's about the only reason why I don't like them. Okay. What advice would you give to someone just starting out running? Um, I would have fun with it. Um, obviously, I would take it serious if you want to go. If you if you want to get a lot out of it, I would take it serious early on. But also, don't take it too serious that you don't have any fun while you do it. Yeah. Um, your biggest motivator, the fear of losing or the drive to win? Um, I think it's just a drive to win. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I think if you put losing in your mind, you're going to lose. So I don't try to do that. Okay. A little nuanced question. What's your favorite co quote from coach Wick? This one you might have to think for a while. Um, I think when I was running the four by four and he yelled my split at the 200 as 20 seconds. Uh, I, I had a hard time not laughing while racing four by four. So that just kind of gives you a taste of what coach Wick is like. Yeah. Um, someone on the team who you couldn't live with. Who I couldn't live with. Uh, Yamane. <laughs> he moves too slow. Oh, no way. I thought you were going to say Drew. <laughs> you are living with him next year. Uh, favorite post-race meal. Definitely Raisin Canes, okay. without a doubt. All right, last question, we're over time, but what's next for your running career? Um, that's a good question. Uh, probably depends on how a couple postseason things go. If I'm able to make the USA Championships and do some damage in like a prelim and final maybe, I feel like that would potentially open up, like you said, more professional opportunities. But right now I will be back next year and that will – I'll have all next year and that will end my college eligibility. I technically have cross country um, eligibility left, but I will not be finishing all of it. <laughs> so I'll be back for a full year next year and then I don't know what it looks like after that. Okay. Well, we went a little over time. I added a couple more questions, so that's probably why. But Perfect. any other ones you wanted to retouch um, before we finish up the show? Um, I think 
Uh, when you asked about what inspired me to get into running, uh, definitely my older brother. He's had a lot to do with, I think, a lot of the success I've found. He's always been in my corner. He's my biggest fan and cheerleader. And like, I feel like I dream pretty big for myself, but he's even more ridiculous. Like sometimes I feel like I got to talk him into reality when he tells me what I'm capable of, uh, which is, I feel like what makes it really easy to strive to be great because like people in my corner are like I'm having to talk them into reality which I think is good because I think no one's doubting me and it's it's just easy to shoot for the stars yeah in in the realm of confidence where do you think that plays like what's the balance between enough confidence and not having do you think you can have too much confidence I guess is what I'm asking um, I don't think you can have too much confidence. I just think you have to be realistic with what you're able to do in the moment. I think I've always been very confident, but I always haven't been the best runner. Um, and so I think that, you know, confidence can change. You can be very confident in your ability, but that doesn't mean you're going to win the race. So I think you kind of got to take that two ways. I think most people associate if you're confident, that means you're going to win, but you can be very confident. Um, in fields that are much better than you. Like I was racing in Portland last year against, you know, American record holder, Evan Jagger, who's been to more Olympics than I have national meets. Yeah. Like I was still confident in that field. I, I wasn't confident that I was going to win, but I felt confident in my ability to compete with those athletes. Right. So I think you just kind of got to, you know, take that with how you do and don't let your confidence like harm you, but you definitely need to have it in the sport. Now, when you get humbled, and your confidence is high and it kind of drops after a race. Let's say Portland, you didn't, maybe didn't have the best race. Right. What do you do to either regain that confidence or, or is that something you, you kind of leave the confidence there and just regain your ability and then the confidence will come? Uh, I think you just got to like, you don't forget how to run fast and you don't forget your abilities. So, I mean, one bad race or even a bad season, I don't think, you know, I, it'll hurt people's confidence, but I think you need to like keep in mind, like you're still the stud that you were before yeah. or like what got you to that point. So I wouldn't like turn your back on what's made you what you are. And you just kind of have to like, maybe look in the rear view mirror a little bit and realize like you can still do it. And it's, you know, you might've had a bad season, but you're totally capable of more. Yeah, I like it. I think that's a good note to end on. Appreciate you uh, spending a little bit of your time here. It took a little bit for us to set up this. <laughs> this uh studio i guess but i appreciate it so of course all right before we end the show we kind of did prematurely but before we completely end the show who do you want to throw the ball to for for the next episode uh, we've got to get it off our team uh, yeah, yes I with agree. nate and then me so i think i want to i want to see if we can get joe anderson on here mm, oh, I like he's that. at dort they won a uh, national cross-country championship this fall so i think it'd be cool to get his perspective on things and i see his travel posts all the time so uh <laughs> got to see what he's up to these days i raced joe my freshman year in the 3200 1a 3200 which was actually a 2800 and a 3200 and a 3200 they rang the bell on that early i was so far behind that it didn't matter to me but it did to Joe. So <laughs> did you did you know what lap you were on? Yes, I did. Okay. I did not think I was gonna run a nine flat two mile. I think Joe knew what lap he was on. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have to ask him about that when he gets yeah, on the show. Sure. I'm sure he hasn't forgotten about it. But all right, now we're ending. <laughs> See you, Reese.